So I'm going to tell a story. It was from about, this happened, I think, about three or four years ago, maybe, maybe a little bit longer. Now, I worked at the library for a long time. In fact, I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room, and this is why I don't like to do these sorts of events, uh, because I probably gave uh, a lot of you guys problems getting into the library. And if, and if I gave you a tough time, um, I'm sorry. Unless it was your fault and you were being a ding-dong, then that's your fault. Um, <laughs> Uh, so shame on you, you can apologize to me afterwards. But otherwise, so I would sit, if, uh, if you haven't been to the library, um, uh, I, there's, a, there's a desk, and there are some. Um, it, there's a desk in the front, and uh, it has a perfect view of that field in front of the library in the, in the middle. And uh, one summer I was working at the library, and it was a beautiful sunny day, and this woman came and sat down on a bench in front of the library. And uh, she, was, uh, she was beautiful. She uh, had this long hair, and she had a dress, and it was, uh, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was a Sunday, so it was very quiet. And for some reason, uh, this lady sat there for like two and a half hours, no joke. She sat there for a really long time. And so during this time, I'm staring at her, and... Um, <laughs> And uh, I, had, uh, I have really poor eyesight, and uh, I was before I had uh, glasses. And so at that time, I, so I was squinting to make sure she was as beautiful as I thought she was. <laughs> and uh, no joke, the, the sun was moving. She was there for a long time, and the sun was moving. It was just making her prettier. And she kept on doing that thing from the Pantene Pro-V commercial. <laughs> and I was like, yes. So, um, and so, uh, about two and a half hours in, uh, I couldn't handle it anymore. And so uh, I knew I was going, I had to do something. So I got up, I didn't know what I was going to do or what I had to do, but I knew I, I, knew I had to do something. I, this is all true, this is what was going through what somebody may call a brain of mine. And so I, I got up and I went outside and I did, I did my, okay, pump up, I'm a man, walk. And I got to about right here, and I saw that, yes, indeed, she was a beautiful woman, but I think she was about 40 or something, and she was just a little uh, older than, than uh, kind of what I was looking for. So I was like, thank God, and then I just kept on walking. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, uh, uh, okay, so what's up with this? Uh, what I want to highlight with this story, uh, Besides the fact that, sorry, Chris, I had never told you that, and my Chrisma is my wife, and so I didn't want to uh, describe this woman in too much detail in case my wife sees her. She doesn't maul this woman, but um, <laughs> uh, I was waiting for you, honey. I, that's why. I, and so, um, uh, some things that I, I think this this story highlights. Just in, just in a one to two and a half hour period of one, one guy's day, okay? Beauty exists, and it's important. And it's important to our lives because we just instinctively, often unconscious, unconsciously, react to it. In fact, it, it has effect, right? It has effects. It affects us, okay? And it makes us do stuff. It does stuff to us, and it makes us do stuff. And when some object is beautiful, there are different ways to respond to it, and some ways are better than others. I don't know what was appropriate for that day. I haven't given it too much thought since. Uh, but uh, there, are, there are certainly times when I know that this is not the way I should res be responding to this beautiful object, or, and especially this beautiful person, at least mentally, okay? even if my act, if, even if I'm just standing here. I might be responding to this object inappropriately, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. So there is a lot going on with beauty, and uh, it's, it's complex and it's powerful. Uh, and so it, with all of its complexity, and there's just so much going on, and there's this whole field aesthetics that talks about it, uh, uh, that power and that effects on, effects on us, they're woven into our lives. And so tonight, I just want to talk about just a couple things very briefly. Um, uh, a couple aspects of beauty. Uh, and um, uh, 
Yeah, I, I want to see how these play out in our lives in just a couple specific areas that, that I hope are relevant to us. Certainly they're relevant to me, so at least I'll walk away with something tonight. Um, and uh, I want to give some attention to what it would look like uh, to, approach, uh, to approach beauty appropriately, especially God's beauty. Uh, so uh, when I was approached to speak tonight, uh, I was asked, uh, what is one thing that you would like to talk about uh, beauty-wise? That you think would be uh, that you think Biola people should hear, um, and so the the one thing is this: that beauty is important for us, and if we want to flourish and do well uh, as as not only Christians but just kind of people who are alive and uh, and really living well, uh, then um, then we have to take beauty seriously. So not just as uh, people, as kingdom people but just as world people. You don't have to be a Christian here tonight um, to, to get anything from this. Oh man, I wish I had written a book because then I can sell it to non-Christians too. That'd be wonderful. Um, so, so let's look at some biblical data. Uh, this is from, uh, from Matthew. I'll, I'll read these couple of verses really quick, but this is from Matthew 11, if you have a Bible. Um, and it's in, uh, uh, it's in 11, starting at, I'll pick up at 27. Jesus is talking, he says, all things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then he says something, uh, so that's, that's really powerful, especially if you're into thinkers like I'm into, like Aquinas and Bonaventure, who say, wow, there's something going on in the Trinity where the, the Son has access to all the thoughts of the Father, and then the Son offers some of those to us. That's interesting. Okay, but so this is interesting too. Come to me, Jesus says, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So there's, there's a lot going on here, uh, but the idea I want to trace a little bit is uh, is that we can find rest in God, and, and I want to use beauty to get us there. So, so what is beauty? This is a notoriously tricky question. Again, there's a whole field, and, and it's, it's tough, and the, the common uh, guy or gal on the street, I think it, they, they, they genuinely believe that beauty is, is merely or just in the eye of the beholder, and if you think it's beautiful, then, it, then it's beautiful for you. And, and I think that that's just not true, um, but I just can't go into this stuff. So you should take my class. You should demand that, that um, I don't know, that I teach more classes and I get a raise or something. Um, uh, and so, uh, so like love, there are just all these sorts of fringe cases of beauty and it's hard to know if that's beautiful and if so, how beautiful is it? But I think there are some, some just some really good things we can point to and say, yeah, for sure, that's beauty. And so for me, there, I, I will often use like sunsets. Those are something that, are, that is one of those things that just really hits you, especially with all the, when there's good clouds and all the colors in Southern California. Um, and, and hummingbirds, I think hummingbirds are just the most magical creatures. And so, um, uh, so those are a couple of things I might talk about. Uh, so so uh, a rough characterization would look like this of beauty. I, there, there are two things I think belong in, in, a, in a, any good definition of beauty have to have these two things. Uh, it involves right order, okay? And that, think harmony or balance, okay? Um, right proportion, things are just right. And I don't think we have to spell this out to know it's true. If you walk into a room and, and stuff is strewn in a certain way, you get this feeling that things just aren't, that you just won't be comfortable. And if you walk in, if you do, cert, if you move certain things in your room and get the rug here and just change stuff a little bit, okay, things are a little bit more beautiful. Something's right. And I don't think we, I think we can, but I don't think we have to know why. We just, we can just realize there's something going on with beauty. And so there, and, and that involves order and proportion and, and harmony, okay? So that's one important thing. So keep that in mind, hold that in your mental places. And so, um, and the next thing is that beauty is, uh, is goodness made apparent to the senses, okay? So uh, we'll, we'll talk, I'll bring that up later, but I just wanna put that out. Beauty is goodness apparent to your senses, okay? 
So here are a few aspects of beauty. Uh, I want to name three things that's going on with, that is going on with beauty that we need to know. Uh, uh, and I won't argue for these. I'll just put them out there. And um, I don't know. I'm really just just know I'm really smart and funny and good looking, and you should believe me. Okay. So beauty moves us to its object. Okay. Beauty moves us to its object. And I think this is true. I, it, I, it certainly happened that day. It happened with my wife, and not just her physical beauty. And the more I, I got to know about her goodness, the more it became apparent to my mind, my mind's eye, and, and to my actual eyes, the closer I wanted to be with her. And, and I still do. Um, so, uh, so that's one key aspect. The, the, uh, the next is that beauty uh, has effects on us. It draws us to it um, uh, because we desire it, okay? So not only does beauty draw us in, it does so because we want it, okay? Easy breezy. N uh, and then third, uh, the last one I'll mention is that beauty uh, draws us in and we desire it because it pleases us. And this, should, this is not very complicated. This should make sense. Um, and so uh, if, if I was to say, Hey, look, guys, look at that sunset. And you say, okay. And we're looking at it, and you say, and you just don't get it. And you say, Dennis, why do you want to look at the sunset? And I, I might reply, because it's beautiful. Okay? And for some of you, that might be a good enough answer. But for others, you might say, um, well, why do you want to look at beautiful things? And then I'm going to say, well, because it gives me so much pleasure. And if you say, but why do you want pleasure? I, I, I'm not going to have any answer for you after that, because it's the end of the road, okay? There's no other answers. It was because P pleasure is so great, okay? <laughs> and so um, beauty pleases us, and that's, that's going to be really important. And the fact that it's the end of the road that's as far as it explanatorily as it gets. It's going to be important. Okay. Um, yeah, there are a few more aspects. Uh, there's a ton of aspects of beauty, and uh, well, that's that's a good place to get to get us started. So, so let me set up just a couple problems. Okay. Um, so we all desire beauty, and this is recognized by theists and non-theists. This is recognized by Christians, uh, uh, religious people who in all all different traditions, and then people who who reject. Uh, any sort of religion or any sort of uh, deity or anything like that. Okay? So on the Christian story, God created us with this capacity, and, and, and there's a reason, and we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, but on the atheist and naturalist story, they have to give a story, right? They have to give a reason why humans just seem to do this. And for them, they'll talk about uh, evolution or, or something like this. And that may or may not be true. Okay? In any event, it's, it's just kind of recognized as... as being true that humans desire beauty, that it moves them towards it, and they, they just want it. Okay. So maybe you don't spend a lot of time thinking about that desire. Um, uh, so, but all things being equal, if I asked you, do you want to see something beautiful right now? Uh, probably most of you would say, yeah, right? If I said, ladies, um, I'm going to bring up a beautiful man for you to, well. <laughs> right? No, but an actual beautiful man, maybe with a actual muscles and right, and his hair is not going white, and um, and so guys, right, the just a, a very fine specimen of of the the fairer sex, right? Who's gonna say all things being equal? No, I just don't want to see a, a beautiful person, right? Most people, at least in this room, not, but they, but they do exist. There are people who reject beauty in their lives, and, and this is one of the first problems, right? People, there are, there, especially in, in contemporary art, there's a great disdain for beauty. There is a hatred for it. Now, if you're not an artist, um, or you're not into the contemporary art world, then you might not, you might not know this. But if you, if you even look at some of the pieces that are just floating around, you have, you have uh, things that take great pleasure in desecrating beauty. And uh, there, there are some reasons for that, but basically, uh, for the sake of time, it comes down to, well, one of the, the deals with beauty uh, is that it reveals um, 
our finiteness, our limitation, okay? And it also reveals, it looks like, a trans something that goes beyond the object that's beautiful. And that's a really odd thing with beauty, and I, I wish I had time to explore this, but there's something about beauty, and the more beautiful a thing is, like a sunset, the more you want it. And the more you get, let's say the sun is going down and it gets even more beautiful, the more you want that, okay? And the, the more you realize you just can't have it, and the more yeah. it makes you wonder, all right, there's got to be something more. You, at least I want there to be, okay? And some people hate that, um, and, and, and they really do. Okay, they hate that. Okay, um, so another problem. So, so what's the problem? Well, there's there, at least in some corners of the world, there's a hatred for beauty. Another problem, and, and our, our pursuit of beauty gets us in trouble. So I'm gonna give two examples. Uh, let me elaborate a little bit on the idea that beauty moves us. So uh, there's something about extreme beauty and, and uh, extremely beautiful objects uh, such that when we see them, like I was talking about with the um, sunset, we want more. And, and this often doesn't even make sense. We can't even put it into words, but if we could, it wouldn't make sense. W what do you want more of? If you were to ask me that question as I'm looking at a sunset, what do you want more of? I would say, I don't know. Maybe to be closer. To be closer to what? To the sun? Closer to the clouds? Closer to the color? How would that help? I don't know, I, okay, I want it to be more intense. Brighter, okay, so you give me some, maybe brighter, but then I want more. Uh, I, I want to touch it, I want it to be in it, I, I don't know. If I see, and let's take a, a minor beauty, like a hummingbird, I want to touch those little suckers, they're, <laughs> they're quick. <laughs> but why, they're a dirty little creature. I mean, they're pretty. But they, I mean, they're birds, and birds carry uh, fleas and ticks and, st and flus and stuff. <laughs> and so, um, uh, they're magical, but they're gross, probably. <laughs> so it might not make sense. So there, there are these problems with beauty, okay? So, uh, but I want to point that out. There's, there's something going on in this desire, in this, draw, in this drawing us in that beauty, that beauty does, that, that's kind of inexplicable. It doesn't really make sense once you start piecing things together. Uh, at least so long as you're, you're missing an important piece of the pie. Uh, and I'll, I'll get there, I'll close there. So, so here's a problem. Uh, here's how, how our approaching beauty can get us into trouble, I think. Okay? One, common, a pro one common problem area, especially for men, is, is sexual addiction. Okay? Duh. Okay? In, in, in my opinion, and in my experience with sexual addiction, uh, is that um, there's this this lack of beauty and a lack of approaching beauty, filling my life with beauty, that I'm trying to make up for. And this is something God, thank, thank goodness, he, he, he showed me very powerfully in the, in the last few years. And that's, and that's made me, helped me to make major inroads in, in my struggle with pornography, major inroads. Um, and so, uh, but, but here's the deal. Uh, so I'm going to talk to men for just a moment, so, so hold on ladies, I'll, I'll get to you, but just a preview uh, Pinterest. Um, uh, so, so when you look at a beautiful woman, right, you, the, again, it's like, it's like the sunset, there's something about it, you, and you don't want to look away, and you want more, and you want to behold this beauty, you want to soak it in. And... Um, uh, and, and, and again, one of the problems, right, as I said, there are these problematic things that don't make sense. Well, sex is weird, and here's why. You can have intercourse, and it satisfies your desire for intercourse, at least for a while, but it doesn't satisfy your desire to behold and soak in that beauty. And that's really odd. So again, this, there's this transcendent thing going in. Um, uh, and so the physical beauty of, of, of women shows this interesting fact about ourselves, uh, that it's the fact that when we're around beauty, we just can't get enough. Um, and, and there's pornography, especially on the internet, and it makes it so easy to get just eyes full, gads full, okay? Just ton, and just, you can just get it, all, get it all until you're too tired, or you have this refractory phase after an orgasm or something, and, and you just, then you just, you, you just get it all off, okay? But until then, you just want more and more, right? So that's interesting. Uh, 
Ladies, um, uh, you, you have problems too, okay? Um, <laughs> I've seen, uh, I, especially working at the library where, uh, where in the evenings when we do these graveyard shifts, especially during, uh, during finals, like 12 to 2 or 4, um, uh, and we're all kind of allowed to be on the computers a little bit, I would see these women and they're just, if they were at the desk, they would just all be Pinterest. And there's be like this, just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through dresses and scrolling and, and like dresses and shoes and another person would be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling like tables, tables with napkins and <laughs> I don't know and um, you know and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through like like kids wearing flowers and I don't get it but it's a, but it's obvious that there's this desire to, to take in more order, okay, more harmony. There's something truly wonderful about all these things. Okay? And it, but it just doesn't satisfy. And so you guys go on these Pinterest, or you gals go on these Pinterest binges. Okay? Maybe not all of you, but probably. Okay? <laughs> um, okay. So there's, there are a couple areas um, where we suffer kind of with beauty, from one final one, um, yeah, we suffer without beauty, and, and I'll just kind of take this as obvious and move on. If you don't have beauty, it's, it's almost hard to imagine. I was trying to think of a good example, and it's just so difficult for me. He, and it, it goes back to something about the Logos, right? If you read John 1, in the beginning, there was, there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and when you, then you look at Genesis, and there's creation, and there's something... Jesus, is, through the Holy Spirit, is doing something beautiful with earth and creating. And so it's going to be hard, because God is such a good artist, to not find beauty in this earth. But, but it has been done in, in some places, uh, it, namely my hometown in the Central Valley of California. Um, uh, it's just kind of a podunk place, and there's, yeah, yeah, Hanford, Central Valley. Yeah, really? Okay, take my class, you get an automatic A. And so... Um, <laughs> It's, it, there, there's a certain kind of austere beauty, right? These fields and stuff, and that's and that's and that's home, and that's good. But it's 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 not a ton. It gets dirty and dusty and stuff. And so, I think about uh, sort of like the Soviet Union, and, and there are places when I looked at their streets, or even today in North Korea, it just looks so drab and colorless and sad. So I can start to massage my brain into thinking like, okay, there are places where beauty is really dampened, just wholesale. But otherwise, it's hard. But anyways, if you were to be in a place like this, you're going to suffer. You're just going to feel the weight, I think. Okay. Um, okay. And alternatively, to finish up, we, we do really well with a lot of beauty in our lives. So, so what's the solution? What's the solution? Well, I think there are two things to, to consider. Uh, two areas where we can find beauty. I only have a few minutes left, and I have a lot of notes. And so we're just going to be here for a long time. Um, no, I'll make, I'll make this uh, quick. Um, the first uh, area is, is what one philosopher has called daily beauty. And, and that's, that's just what it sounds like. Okay? It's finding beauty in our daily lives. And, it, and it's there for the taking. And, and we already do this because humans are beauty sponges. We were made to soak in beauty. Namely, God's beauty, and we'll get there in a sec. And we were made to soak in the beauty of the world because, and that's exactly what beauty does. When you see a sunset, there's something that, goes, that happens, at least to me, and I've heard this before. And you might not think it, but you certainly feel it, that yes, this place is a good home for me, at least in some regard. I'm... I fit, there is an order, and I fit in here, okay? And that's good, because God made you for this world, right? You're an embodied soul. And so it's important to find daily beauties, whether it's in a garden or in hummingbirds, right, or, or whatever. Who cares, right, if we, if we do this automatically, who cares? Well, I think here's why, uh, here, here's one reason why we should care. Um, if you're not being intentional, uh, you probably aren't doing it very well. And if you're not doing it consciously, 
um, then, then you're probably missing out at least on some of the, the experience. And, and you don't want to miss out, right? Uh, you'll do better uh, if you really soak it in and you do it uh, and you really engage in a process that God made you for. Okay, and then uh, the second area, and I wish I could explore that more, um, but I don't want to put you to sleep. <laughs> and so the, the second area that I want to talk about or just kind of mention is, is God's beauty. Now, uh, I, I love uh, to see uh, just kind of what people are genuinely thinking. So if you have no thoughts about this or if you're right now out to lunch or if in your mind you're just seeing like little rabbits kind of go like, going like this, <laughs> that's fine, take a nap. But for anybody who's sticking with me, for you three people, um, <laughs> how many people think that God is beautiful? Show hands, genuinely, right? This is the after dark, so be real. If you're lying, you never know what God's gonna do to you, okay? So a decent amount, okay? Um, right, read Acts, stuff happens. And so, um, so, okay, so out of those people who think God's beautiful, how many of you find God to be beautiful? How many of you guys behold his beauty, do you think? Okay, a few, a few, and even a good amount of those are probably lying, okay? I don't know. This is, this is a tough question. This is something I've been struggling with um, for about a year and a half. Because about a year and a half ago, uh, God said, I'm beautiful to me. And I said, all right, well, if God tells you something, it's probably true. However, I realized I did not find God to be beautiful. And if we really need beauty, and if we really actually need God's beauty, if daily beauties are supposed to kind of make our senses sharper for God's beauty, um, then, uh, then I'm missing something. And if I'm missing something, then I'm not flourishing. I'm not doing well. Not as well as I could. So how can I find God to be beautiful? Well, uh, uh, let me finish up with this. Uh, beauty, one part of it is presenting an object's goodness to your mind. Okay? So one way we can find God to be beautiful is to take some aspect or some action of his and put it before our mind. So I'm thinking Trinity. I love Trinity stuff. That's kind of my, my focus in, in, in God's, specifically God's uh, intertrinitarian love. Okay? So if you can just put that before your mind, things get really interesting and really beautiful really fast. Okay? Here's, here's what I mean. So God's supposed to be this tri-personal being, right? And all these things are supposed, all these persons are supposed to be divine, right? Okay, then uh, how can they have free will and how can they be super powerful and how can some of them submit their wills to another and how can others require or at least ask them to do horrendous things, like take on the, the world's guilt? Or how can uh, the Father ask the Holy Spirit to stick with me even though I do stuff like this to him all the time and I grieve his, little, his, his heart, okay? And, and yet he says, I'm doing this because, not only because I love you, but because I was asked and sent by the Father and the Son. But I'm also all powerful and I can do whatever I please and this is what pleases me. This is amazing. This is harmony beyond harmony, okay? So stuff gets really beautiful really fast, and, and, and when you really sit, at least for me, and, and really reflect on these things, that stuff starts to trickle down, and that draws me in and closer to the source of beauty, and that's wonderful. Now, it doesn't just have to be these highfalutin ideas like the Trinity and stuff, and those can get really, like, conversation, you get kind of technical. It can just be um, uh, an aspect or an, even an action that God has done in your life, and you just reflect on it. What was required here? Wow, that was really merciful, even though this God really is just, okay? And just kind of reflect on these, these seemingly opposite, these kind of extremes, and how they're balanced in God. Okay. Um, okay, to finish up, before I pray, I'd like uh, to return to Matthew 11, um, where Jesus says, uh, right, take on my yoke, it's light, there's a rest with me. Now, there's context here, but I, I don't hesitate, I don't hesitate 
to, to make this claim. There are lots of types of rest we, that God wants us to take in him, okay? And so um, uh, there is no beauty uh, in this life that can satisfy us. Uh, David knew this. He said, I want to dwell in your temple and behold your beauty, okay? Well, he wasn't just looking at pomegranates and saying, God, right, these, but isn't there like pomegranates in the, in the temple? Oh, wait, the temple wasn't even around. His son built it. So it was like in a tent, and he's saying God is beautiful. So he was seeing something, okay? I think he was beholding God's goodness in his mind. Jesus knew this, okay? Um, in, in the next life, okay, on the other side of the eschaton, um, we will no longer see uh, things as if through a glass darkly. We'll, we will behold God in all of his light and goodness. But we don't have to wait. And so I invite you to, to not wait. Uh, because of time, I can only give, right, only kind of hint at a couple practical applications, right, a couple of steps you can take to behold beauty. But I invite you to take beauty seriously and let it be on your radar more and begin to educate yourself. That's always a really good first step. And there are a couple really good authors, especially Christian authors, who write about a theology of beauty. Okay? So I invite you to begin to, to start this journey with God. We hope you enjoyed this message. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Learn more at viola.edu.